Hello and welcome to Introduction to Assembly Language Tutorial. In this video, we will cover what is assembly language and its importance, must know basic information, and what you need to start writing your first assembly program. Assembly is considered to be a processor-dependent, low-level programming language used to translate the assembler's instruction sets directly into the command that the particular CPU can understand. Each family of processors or CPUs has its own set of instructions or assembly language for handling various operations such as getting input from keyboard, displaying information on screen, and performing various tasks. There are many different types of assembly languages out there, but the current most popular, however, are ARMS, MIPS, and x86. ARM is usually used on cell phones and embedded systems. MIPS is popular on SGI Indigo and video games consoles. An x86 assembler is used on Intel PCs, which is widely used in today's society. x86 assembler varies from 16-bit to 64-bit instructions. In this video, we will focus more on x86 assembler. The set of instructions written in assembly language are called machine language instructions. Our CPUs only understand machine language instructions, which are strings of ones and zeros. Since machine language is too complex to be efficiently used in software development, the low-level assembly language is designed for a specific family of processors that represents various instructions in a more understandable form. You may ask why assembly language is important. Well, it's important because assembly allows us to communicate directly with hardware using human-readable text. It is used for direct hardware manipulation, and it gives us permission to access specialized processor instructions to address critical performance issues. Assembly language is used in writing device drivers, operating system designs, and embedded system programs. For example, aviation industry uses assembly a lot. In general, there are many engineering positions, including but not limited to malware analyst, secure firmware engineer, and compiler engineer that require advanced knowledge of assembly programming. Learning assembly will help you understand how data is represented in memory and other external devices, how program interface with operating system, processor, and BIOS, how the processor access and executes instructions, how instructions access and process data, and how a program access external devices. To understand and learn assembly language, we first need to understand few basic features and components. The main internal hardware of a computer consists of processor, memory, and registers. Registers are processor components that hold data and addresses. In order to execute a program, the system copies this into an internal memory, and then the processor executes the program instructions. The unit of computer storage is a bit, which can be 1 or 0. This can be represented at ons and, as ons and offs. A group of 8 related bits makes a byte, and 2 byte data makes a word. Here is what our processor supports when it comes to data sizes. The next important thing to understand before learning an assembly language is developing a found understanding of the following number systems and its representation. Denary or decimal number system is a base 10 decimal number system. It is the standard system for denoting integer and non-integer numbers. Denary or decimal system uses digits to represent all the numbers. In binary number system, each position in which a digit is written has a different positional value. And each position is power of the base 2 and these powers begin at 0 and increase by 1. The value of a binary number is based on the presence of 1 bets and their positional value. In other words, since we only have zeros and ones, and each byte is 8 bit, then we can have 2 to the power of 8 different combination of ones and zeros in each byte of, in each byte of memory. 2 to the power of 8 is equal to 256, hence the 256 characters of ASCII code, which is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. 
I have included a link to the in the description of this video to all the 256 characters using different number system representation. Hexadecimal numbers system uses base 16. The digit in this system range from 0 to 15. By convention, the letters A through F is used to represent the hexadecimal digits corresponding to decimals values 10 through 15. Hexadecimal numbers in computing is used for abbreviating lengthy binary representations. Basically, hexadecimal number system represents a binary data by dividing each byte in half and expressing the value of each half byte. It's very easy to convert binary to hexadecimal. To convert a binary number to its hexadecimal equivalent, we need to break it into groups of four consecutive groups each, starting from the right, and write those groups over the corresponding digits of the hexadecimal numbers. For example, binary number 0001-1101 is equivalent to hexadecimal 1D. To convert hexadecimal numbers to binary, it's very simple as well. Just write each hexadecimal digits into its four-digit binary equivalent. For example, hexadecimal number 2E is equivalent to binary 0010-1110. Here's a table representing the decimal, binary, and hexadecimal equivalents. The octal number system, or oct, is the base 8 number system, which uses the digits 0 to 7. Octal numerals can be made from binary numbers by grouping consecutive binary digits into groups of 3, starting from the right. For example, the octal representation for decimal 12 is 0, 014. Here's a table representing the octal numbers and its representation in other number systems. Another important must know is understanding the execution cycle, the process through which the processor controls the execution of instructions is referred to as execution cycle, which is fetch, decode, execute. This means that the execution cycle starts with fetching the instructions from memory and then it decodes and identifies the instructions and then it executes the instructions right after that. The x86 instruction set architecture is at the heart of our CPUs that powers our computers. Being able to read and write code in assembly language is a powerful skill to have. To start writing program in assembly, you should have access to two different things, two very important things. One, you need to have an IDE to write your assembly language in, and two, you need to have access to the official documentation manual from Intel where it lists the Intel's mnemonics, or instructions keywords, and their descriptions. For your convenience, in the description portion of this video, I have included both a link to setting up Visual Studio 2019 for Assembly MASM, which is an IDE for x86 assembly, as well as the link to official documentation manual from Intel. Looking at this manual for the first time can be a bit overwhelming. But don't worry, in this video and the next couple of videos, I will try to break it down into more manageable and easier to understand segments. To be able to write assembly language, it is important to understand processor registers and its implication, as it happens to be one of the main tools. You can think of registers as variables that are built in the processor. Using registers instead of memory to store values makes the process faster, cleaner, and more efficient. When running a program, our CPU executes a list of instructions sequentially, one by one, in the order listed in the source code. An x86 CPU has these eight 32-bit general purpose registers. Each register can hold a 32-bit integer value. Going back to our general purpose registers, there are eight 16-bit and eight 8-bit registers that makes up the eight 32-bit general purpose registers. These features come from the 16-bit era of x86 CPUs, but it still have some use in 32-bit mode. The 16-bit registers are named as follow and represents the bottom 16 bits of corresponding 32-bit registers. The, notice the prefix E stands for extended. 
The 8-bit registers are named as you see over here and represents the low and high 8 bits of registers of AX, CX, DX, and BX. Whenever the value of a 16-bit or 8-bit register is modified, the upper bits belonging to the full 32-bit register will remain unchanged. Usually most x86 arithmetic instructions operate on the two 32-bit registers. The first operand acts as a source and the second operand acts as both a source and destination. For example, in high-level programming language, to add two numbers, we usually write sum equal 5 plus 2, for example. In assembly, we will use move instruction, which moves data between registers and memory. This instruction has two operands. The first is the destination, which will indicate where we are moving data to, and the second is the source, or where we're getting the data from. So, to solve 5 plus 2, we can simply write move EAX 5, and then add EAX 2, and we're going to say move sum EAX, assuming that we have already declared sum. This simple instruction will add these two 32-bit integers, and 7 will be moved to EAX as sum. All right, now you have enough information to start writing your first assembly program. In the next video, I will help you write your first assembly program and will show you how to use the debugger and breakpoint to see what happens in the registers and memory when we run the program.